Okay, I'm just uh, making this video to explain a few little key delivery things that we do on the Carraros that um, might help some Carraro owners out there um, because um, they're, they're, I guess you'd call them design faults or little oversights, uh, you might say, that they have. So um, one of them is that this grill, uh, beautiful fine mesh there to filter the air before it goes into the radiator. And they've done a beautiful job making that. They've got a nice rubber seal down here where it seals the bonnet onto the bolster here. When the bonnet's closed properly, you've got a good seal there. Uh, so therefore the air's got to come through this screen and uh, that's your initial filtering for the, well, your filtering for the radiator. But what happens is this bonnet catch, which goes in here, uh, doesn't always catch properly, or after a little while you find it doesn't catch properly. And then the bonnet, instead of closing down on the seal, it pops up a little bit. And when that happens, if you've got the bull bar, you'll see what the rub marks where, where it rubs here against the bull bar. I'm not closing that properly, but um, I don't want to scratch this new one. But if you see rub marks there on your tractor from the bull bar, that means it's only the bull bar holding it down and you've got a gap under here between the rubber seal, which is letting all the char in straight through and blocking up your radiator. Uh, all right, so we make this little mod to the uh, to the bonnet catch here that helps that. I mean, you can just lube them. If you keep them well lubed, you, you're not likely, or you, you're likely to, to overcome the problem. But just so you understand what the problem is, when the striker comes up and hits this, um, and you can see the point over here where this one hits this one. Now this one is spring loaded. So as this one pushes against there, it pushes that across. Right? And that allows this then to come up fully right? until that latches it there. Right? And that's in the closed position. To open it, you put your key in there and you turn it this way, which is brings that across there until that allows that to drop down like that. Right? So just to recap on what the problem is here, if you draw a line from that pivot point, you know, where, where this pivots, right? a line from there to this pivot point here, and in the middle where this strikes this, right? it's not striking at the moment, but when it comes up and it strikes it, you'll see that, that those three points are almost a straight line, right? which means this point here, has got very little leverage over here and it's very close like the point where it strikes is very close to this pivot point so it's asking a lot of this to push that you've got to push this very hard to be able to push that back right now it can do it and it works when it's all sliding nicely but when it's after it's been in the dust for a while and it and it's um in need of some lubrication it doesn't work uh, very well or it doesn't work at all so your bonnet doesn't close right so to overcome the, the, such a need for the, the lubrication, what we do is we cut the corner off there. You can see I've put a little scratch across there maybe. Right? So that when this comes up, it doesn't strike here, it strikes further up. Okay, And then it's got some leverage. This has then got a little bit of leverage over this, or more leverage over it, to be able to push it back easy. You can see I can't even push that back now, but when I hit there. Right. Once you come up here further and get to the point where it latches in, that little bit that I've ground out, or I'm going to ground out, you'll see it doesn't make any difference. See, once you get to that point there, it's not gonna make any difference that it's ground out and it's still gonna drop in and, and latch in okay. All right, so I'm gonna cut that out. Now, the, the big question is how do you get in there to cut it? Because this is all riveted together, you can't do it. So I'll, I hold that spring out of the way and I hold this, oh, uh, and I actually put a cut in here that gives me access to put a cut through there. So I'm going to do this cut and I'll show you the, the finished product in a minute. But the other thing I do, if you look at this spring here, now that spring is pushing this way, but the purpose of that spring is to pull this back that way. Right? You can see that, and it does that by, by friction, you know, sliding along this the rod of the spring but because it's so close to 90 degrees like it works beautifully now but again as it gets a little bit old 
um, it doesn't slide, well, not old, but you know, a bit dry for lubrication. Um, it doesn't slide all right, very well, and, and that causes your problems too. So what we do is we put a little bend in there, just to change the angle of that spring from there to a little bit more that way. But then we had the problem that this little tab on the end can hit here, and then the spring's not being effective. So we cut a little bit off there, just so it doesn't hit. So there's three things we're gonna do to this. We're gonna cut the corner off that piece. We're gonna put a little bend in there, and we're gonna cut probably about maybe two mil off the end of there. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now, and I'll come back and show you the, the end result. Okay, so now we've, uh, you can see the slight bend in that spring, it's not very much. You can see that that's a bit shorter. And you can see the cut through here, I've made through here to give me access to, to cut that. See, so I've got to hold that up in that position while I do it. And now, when I push that up, you can see it comes up, instead of striking it there, it comes up further and strikes it there and it's got a lot more leverage over, this has got more power over this. Okay, so it just works a lot better. So. I'll bring this back around here, lock that in. That there now isn't so demanding on lube because of that angle, it slides better. Okay, you can imagine that little bend there you know, closes that gap there, but I've shortened that little bit. And uh, there you go, and that's it. Um, if you see, I can actually push that up now. And it locks in and so that all just works a lot better the way it's meant to work without the need for so much lubrication uh, so that'll keep your bonnet seal closed down onto here which will you know stop the rubbish coming in the other little trick you need to know like i said if you look up here they've done a beautiful job in making this bonnet beautiful grill beautiful seal but if you come in here and have a look here one little oversight is uh, there's a gap straight through there okay so if you fill that gap uh with celastic just with black celastic it's it's not noticeable go back a little bit so you've got a bit more view um you know fill that gap there and, and up there a little bit and up there and around here see, see there and uh because otherwise it, it draws chaff in through there and uh you know you'll have this this seal nicely closed you'll have the bonnet all sealed up and yet you'll still find big bits of chaff in on your radiator and you'll wonder how on earth is it getting there and, and that's where so you seal up that gap and uh, again keeps your radiator clean and uh, so less overheating problems okay thanks